This presentation is about suture refixation and recentration of a subluxated Sioni ring and bag IOL complex. I'm Howard Gimbel from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I have no financial interest. So you can see this broken Sioni ring has allowed this bag IOL complex to subluxate. We're sitting in a temporal position here. You can see as I pull this tenoproline suture out, it's broken at the tip. This is a reverse Hoffman tunnel for placement of a ninoproline suture. We're going to catch the Sioni ring eyelet and then we're going to capture this needle with a 26 gauge cannula through a paracentesis. Then that needle is going to be brought back through the same paracentesis and we've placed a sharp 27 gauge can uh, needle through the Hoffman tunnel and capture the the double arm suture which is only it's still the same suture and brought back through the t tunnel to re-engage and refixate this Sioni ring eyelet And as we pull this tight, you can see that the lens is subluxated a little bit inferiorly. And I'm going to now use a technique that I've developed after this double throw temporary suture that we've called a capsular membrane suture fixation. So the needle is tucked there, the, the knot is tucked in, and we're making a scleral groove rather than a limbal groove for the modified Hoffman tunnel. I like to stay away from the limbus for these peripheral sutures for using the capsule membrane suture fixation technique. We've termed this CMS fixation. So the tenoproline, ninoproline I should say, suture is brought now through the capsular membrane, that fibrotic membrane at the CCC, and out through the sclera. And the second needle of the double arm ninoproline is passed above the capsule, out through the sulcus, and again through the sclera to refixate the capsule and stabilize the capsule and recenter the capsule holding the intraocular lens. This technique allows for uh, perfect centration because if this suture does not center it perfectly we can add sutures anywhere and any number to achieve perfect centration of the bag IOL complex. The double throws did not hold under that tension so we're just tightening that again to explore now and see what the, the centration is like and we can see as we're sitting temporally here that the lens is a little decentered inferiorly so I'm going to add another second capsular membrane suture at about the 10.30 o'clock position. To try to achieve perfect centration of the intraocular lens. Starting the Hoffman tunnel 
away from the limbus does require conjunctival cut down but I like the shorter tunnel and I like staying away from the limbus to avoid any possible uh, flattening effect in the meridian of the incision. Again the second arm of the nanoproline is passed above the capsule through the sulcus and out through the sclera again. We've edited out here but these sutures are brought out of the tunnel after the needle is passed and then temporarily adjusted until we're sure there's permanent central fixation and then tying them permanently. So again, this is the advantage of capsular membrane suture fixation is that we can put a suture anywhere necessary on the circumference and as many as necessary. We're not limited by the number of haptics on the lens. To go through the Sioni ring in the periphery of the capsule risks tearing the capsule because there's no fibrosis in that part of the capsule. The fibrosis is where the anterior capsule uh, touches the posterior capsule or touches the implant. So we use that fibrosis to fix the capsule or membrane and the capsule to the sclera. Capsular membrane suture fixation. All the knots are trimmed and tucked into the tunnels. And then the conjunctiva is closed with tenno vicral starting inside the incision so the knots are buried. So we have a tripod refixation for centered stable fixation using two capsular membrane sutures as well as the Sioni CTR suture.